So this is a case of orbital lymphoma and here we will present two different uh, presentations of uh, chronic symptoms of orbital lymphoma. So let me begin with the initial presentation, the chief complaint. Chronic dull ache of the left eye. History of present illness. A 73 year old man was referred to the university hospital's oculoplastic service for evaluation of intermittent dull aching pain of his left eye for one year duration. He also noticed progressive bulging of both eyes with associated redness, swelling, intermittent tearing and mattering that did not improve with artificial tears. Otherwise, he denied changes in his vision, pain with eye movements or diplopia in any gaze position. Past ocular history. No history of ocular trauma or surgery. Past medical history. Significant for hypertension, hyperlipidemia, atrial fibrillation, thyroid nodules, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and obstructive sleep apnea. Medications include apixaban, atorvastatin, cetanopram, diltiazem, lorazepam and lusartan hydrochlorothiazide combination. He has got no known drug allergies Family history is non-contributory. Social history, he uh, is a tobacco smoker and smokes one pack per day. Review of systems is negative except for what is detailed in the history of present illness. Coming to ocular examination. Visual acuity with um, and without correction by Snellen was right eye 20 by 20, the left eye was 20 by 25 pin holding to 20 by 20. Ocular motility was full in both eyes. Intraocular pressure, it was soft to palpation in both right and left eyes. Pupils, there was no relative afferent pupillary defect in the right eye, but there was a trace RPD in the left eye. External examination, the right eye was unremarkable. The margin to reflex uh, distance MRD1 was 3 mm for the right eye and for the left eye the MRD1 was 0.5 mm uh, with some exophthalmos. As you can see in this external photograph uh, of both eyes demonstrating left upper lid dosis and mild injection of the left eye. Coming to slit lamp examination for the left eye. Lids and lashes, there was left upper eyelid dosis with fullness infrotemporally. The conjunctiva and saclera showed a superior salmon patch lesion with conjunctival hyperemia. The cornea was clear, anterior chamber was deep and quiet. Iris had normal architecture and the lens showed nuclear sclerotic cataract. Here we have got another external photograph of both eyes demonstrating a unilateral lesion in the left eye with classic salmon patch appearance of the orbital lymphoma in the left eye. Again you can see the external photograph of the left eye demonstrating the classic salmon patch appearance of the orbital lymphoma and hyperemia of the conjunctiva in the left eye. Additional testing, Goldman visual field testing showed a supramedial secocentral defect in the right eye whereas in the left it was a full visual field. Differential diagnosis, orbital lymphoma, benign lymphoproliferative lesion, epithelial tumor, inflammatory or infectious lesion, metastasis of the extraocular tumor, orbital fat prolapse, Epibulbar dermoid, orbital amyloidosis, and melanocytic tumor. Clinical course. The patient had 
MRI of the orbits completed and this imaging showed the presence of a left orbital mass scanner encasing the left optic nerve. He underwent left anterior orbitotomy and biopsy of the left orbital lesion. Pathology showed extra conal, marginal zone, marginal zone B cell lymphoma. The patient was referred to hematology oncology for additional workup and management of the lymphoma which included whole body, PET CT and MRI of the brain in orbit with and without contrast. So what is the final diagnosis in this first case? It was an orbital lymphoma, subtype extra nodal, marginal zone, B cell lymphoma. Coming to the case number two. 60 year old male who was evaluated by internal medicine one week earlier for conjunctivitis in the left eye. Chief complaint. 60 year old man who was referred for conjunctivitis. History of present illness. The patient complained of gradual worsening of redness in the left eye over several months. He denied any pain, discharge, discomfort or itching. He reported fullness of the superior aspect of the left medial canthus as well. The patient also complained of blurry vision of the left eye and binocular diplopia. Past ocular history, no history of ocular trauma or surgery. Past medical history, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in remission for numerous years. Medications, no known medications and no known medication allergies. Family history is non-contributory and social history is a non-smoker. Review of systems, negative except as above. Ocular examination, best corrected visual acuity by Snell and was 20 by 20, right and left. Ocular motility was full for the right eye but showed hypotropia with supraduction deficit in the left eye. Intraocular pressure was 18 millimeters of mercury in the right eye and 19 in the left eye. Pupils, both eyes, 4.5 millimeter in dark, 3.5 millimeter in light without any RAPD in either eye. External examination, hurtal X of thermometry at a base of 113 millimeters, measured right eye 13 millimeter and left eye 17 millimeter. Coming to slit lamp examination of the left eye, lids and lashes revealed left upper eyelid ptosis with fullness supratemporally. Conjunctiva saclera showed superior conjunctival hyperemia. The cornea was clear, anterior chamber was deep and quiet. The iris had normal architecture and the lens have a nuclear sclerotic cataract. Here we have got the images of his extraocular movements and you can note the left hypotropia in primary gaze and elevation deficit in the left eye with up gaze. Again you have um, another image showing left eye with superior conjunctival injection. Another photograph with left medial canthus fullness and note the asymmetric ptosis in the left eye and there is more ptosis medially. And here we have the coronal CT scan without contrast and you can see a large medial mass indenting the globe. And here you have the axial CT without contrast. Again you can see large medial mass displacing the medial rectus but is not eroding into the bone or surrounding soft tissue. Another image of anterior orbitotomy, note the fleshy mass in the superior nasal quadrant. Differential diagnosis. Orbital lymphoma benign reactive lymphoid hyperplasia or atypical lymphoid hyperplasia K 
cavernous hemangioma, optic nerve meningioma, orbital metastasis, neurofibroma, neurilemoma, which is for example benign schwannoma, <coughs> fibrous histiocytoma, hemangiopericytoma, lymphangioma, mucosal, thyroid, eye disease, most common cause of unilateral proptosis in adults. Coming to clinical course, the patient presented with acute awareness of a long-standing problem, fullness of the upper lid, binocular diplopia, and injection of the left eye. However, he did not have other signs of infection such as pain, itching, tearing, or discharge. On examination, his left-sided upper eyelid ptosis, unilateral supraduction or elevation deficit, proptosis, and a firm palpable mass in the supranasal quadrant raised the suspicion of an orbital mass. Due to his history of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, orbital imaging was obtained, computed, tomography of the orbits showed a large orbital mass that molded to surrounding structures without direct invasion. An anterior orbitotomy was notable for a large pink mass, pathology confirmed the mass to be a CD20 and PCL2 positive lymphoma. Extensive imaging studies of the head and body did not reveal any additional tumor. The patient was treated by radiation oncology with local radiation. So again the final diagnosis is orbital lymphoma. Now coming to the summary of this condition, what is the epidemiology? Incidence. For example, in Florida, there are two cases per million population, affects all age groups, and among the mo it is among the most common orbital tumors seen in the adults, cavernous hemangioma, lymphoid tumors, and meningiomas are the most common adult orbital tumors. Symptoms. Gradual onset, painless, slow progression, binocular diplopia, extraocular motility problems, proptosis, mechanical ptosis from tumor pushing down late. Signs. Salmon patch lesion on the globe. CT scan will show a lesion that pushes and molds surrounding structures and bone. There is no erosion into the surrounding tissue. Non-tender, firm mass. Treatment. It depends upon the type of the tumor and its extension. Chest and abdominal CT are used to identify abnormal nodes and spread. Bone marrow aspiration to rule out marrow involvement. If there is no systemic involvement, orbital lymphomas are typically sensitive to local irradiation. Chemotherapy is an option for patients with systemic involvement. Incisional biopsy is needed for pathological diagnosis.